Okay, so a little subtlety I uh, you didn't really cover in the last video, but I'll expose here is even though um I have this generic type, this pair TU, and I'm using it here. Uh, a pair string string that makes a unique type from pair int int. In the last video, I, I literally said you know int int, and and then here I said string string, and you would obviously hopefully agree that this type is not equal nor is it the same type as this type well the same is true when using generics this int int is not equal to string string in fact I can even prove it here I'm gonna say uh, let's go console right line let me zoom in a little bit console right line uh, marriage one dot get type uh, dot equals p dot get type okay so get type get type p is parent int string string and we see we have faults there All right but actually more intriguing is I can say CW oh, oh, CW um, p dot get type and control L control VV marriage one dot get type and right, notice the strings that print out here is their their type we have pair uh, I want to say tick two All right the two is a uh, this is generated by the compiler basically uh, or, or the runtime, uh, the two means two arguments. It's a two argument generic type. The tick means it's a generic type. So pair tick takes two generic arguments. This one um, is of type int32, int32, and this other one is type string string. Okay, so you can see there that that uh, even though we've parameterized the type, and it looks like we have a a uh, class that would be equal to itself, it's not because it's determined by the t and the U. Now, deep down, even under the CLR level, that uh, I'll do another video talking about how generics are actually native to the missile CLR code, but for now, down in the actual code code where it's machine level native assembly, um, that actually has significance because if, you remember I had all those pair classes here, I had pair int, int, pair float, 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 int, int, float, all those various um, iterations, and I could have gone on and on infinitely with every single type ever in the in the uh, framework and also any type that you make and types that I make and somebody in somewhere else makes All right we could we could have several several different versions well that um, each one generates unique code in a sense and in, in most cases it will generate unique code we'll get in some details about that a little later but but that causes code bloat I mean if if I took every possible combination and copy and pasted it right here into my code, I, I bloated my code because every copy paste um, hurts a little bit, especially with uh, value types. I'll get into reference types a little bit later and how there's some optimizations that go on there. But but uh, pretty much the same thing here. I have pair int int and pair string string. The, in the machine code, the compiler essentially has to copy and paste this code and replace t with string in this case and, and string in this case, an int in this case, an int in that case. Um, so it, it can cause some code bloat. All right. Uh, you notice here also that I have T and U. I never really differentiate them there. I could say pair string, oops, pair string float. And now my U in that case is going to be a float, which means I second can't be Bill. We're going to have Fred uh, married to 900. All right, uh, 900 uh, F for float. Okay, what's 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 the problem here? Oh, I need a float here as well. Float. Okay, that's that's one reason why it's nice to just throw var out here because then the compiler can make up the difference for you. But anyway, um, that's something to consider there. Is that these argument types can differ? If I wanted to force them to be the same, I'd simply go here and say, well, this is also going to be a t, and I no longer need the u. And so now every time I say pair here, I I have to just have one type argument to the template. Alright, and uh, same thing here. This pair of strings. Alright, pair of ints. Oops, pair of int. And now notice this 900F's not going to work out because I'm forced to be strings on both T and U. So I actually should, I can't remember who I had there, front Fred and Bill maybe. I can't remember. Anyway, so a little bit about uh, template arguments, why they're useful. And, and like all tools, this has its place, uh, definitely in collections and data structures where 
it's used the heaviest, but we'll talk about that in a future video.